Hi all, it's Denise, and I'm here in my studio working on a couple pieces for an upcoming show that is titled, titled Wildlife, and I'm working on two pieces on very thick wooden boxes. Um, I think they're about 15 by 15, and if you can see the start of my piece, it's a cheetah, um, and like I said, this show is about wildlife, and as I'm working on it and in one of my classes, I realize that not everybody knows how to stencil. It seems like a really easy thing. You have a stencil, you push paint through it, and you call it a day. But very often, uh, people will lay the stencil down and really glob the paint on it and then not really understand why paint is seeping through. So I'm gonna give you a little quick tutorial on this and show you how I do it. Um, this is a really great little stencil that I've had for a million years by Royal Design Studio. Um, Melanie Royal of Royal Design Studios has been in business for many, many years, um, has a wonderful selection of stencils, and I actually learned how to stencil from her years and years ago. And even though I don't do a lot of stenciling uh, now, on walls and furniture. I do use stencils very often in my artwork just as an extra little something to make it interesting. So here's what I do. I'm, I'm just using black paint and I've got it in my lid to my coffee can. Here's the best way to do it. Oh, first your stencil brush. Make sure that you have a decent stencil, stencil brush. Not one that's stiff and hard, but one that has some flexibility to it. Um, I, have a, I have so many stencil brushes in so many different sizes. These sizes are the ones I use the most for my artwork because I'm working on smaller pieces. Although I do have some that are big fat stencil brushes to do larger areas and walls. But for what we're doing here, this is gonna work fine. So what you wanna do is get the paint on your brush. Do not glob the paint on your brush. Just load it on, and once you've got your paint loaded on, offload it. Get most of the paint off. And I'm not pushing hard, I'm just kind of gently wiping. Go to your stencil and do really a soft little circular motion. And I'm just kind of moving around. I'm going pretty soft. I'm doing a sir. I'm not pounding. I'm not putting a lot of paint on. I'm just kind of moving around. And let's see how that turned out. Perfect. It's exactly how I wanted it to turn out. You can see a little bit closer. I don't have any bleeds. I don't have any. Um, where it's gone underneath my stencil, I have a perfectly following the design of my stencil. And the nice thing about this is you can, let's say I want to do a little bit up here, and I might want to do that, offload even more paint and just create a little shadow of the stencil. Just enough to have that going on. Now, there you go. I've got enough. I don't want to completely cover everything, and some of this may even go away uh, when I continue working on this piece. It's a mixed media piece. I have a lot of papers laid down. Let me hold it so you can see it. I have text paper. I have some decorative papers. I have lettering. Um, I have a lot going on on this already, but once I get my, my uh, cheetah a little bit more defined, even though I know this could probably be a leopard print and not a cheetah print. Either way, I just wanted to show you how to do the stencil, and I may paint all over this and through this and then bring out my design again to define it, but mainly, I just wanted to share with you the easiest way to do a stencil. Go light, go gentle, circular motion, do not fill up your paint, your brush with a lot of paint, offload most of the paint, and then go and do your little motion. And then you can always come back and do it again if you want to darken some areas up. 
And that's all I've got for you. I wanted to show you that, and I've done it, and I hope you get to use it. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>